Stewart lives near a train station. Very near, in fact. Stuart Cope, hello. How are you, James? Hello. Good to see Lead you. on. His house has to be seen to be believed. It's a labyrinth of compact disc walls and teetering book towers. Thank you for letting us into the inner sanctum here. Not a problem <laughs> at all. I'm glad you could fit. Could you actually find a mushroom track in here? No, if you wanted... don't even think about it. <laughs> they, they, they're over there somewhere. In the interest right. of full disclosure, those born after 1990 may not know that I used to play in a band called The Mobbles. And we were signed to Gadinsky's label, Mushroom Records. You would write this with the notion that Michael Gadinsky is a you know, very influential person on, on Australian music. In what way? Principally as a flag waver for Australian music. Um, you know, he, he's just so naturally larger than life, exuberant. Once he cottons on to an artist, you know, he's, he's the guy behind Skyhooks, Hunters and Collectors, Split Ends, Paul Kelly, The Models, Jimmy Barnes, The Rubens, Temper Trap. I think his main skill and, and contribution is just his enthusiasm. Yeah, he, he still uses the word vibe 25 years after everyone else has stopped using it. But if the vibe is good and the vibe is happening, then, you know, Michael is this unstoppable force. What's different about Mushroom? We've set up a label which is involved with more than just the recording, but recording, the publishing, the actual management and the agency all working very strongly together. If you're an Australian an emerging musician and you want someone out there hustling and screaming about you and talking to anyone, you know, you, you don't get anyone more exuberant yeah, yeah. than Gadinsky. Did, did Mushroom, did Michael create the pub rock kind of scene or the Australian sound, is it that sort of influence? No, I mean the pub scene was, was very much there before, before Mushroom. Uh, what Michael and, and Mushroom did was, was nurture it, they gave it a home, you know, this sort of enclave for, you know, a, a, a largely blues based, you know, credible, serious, um, rock and roll label and it was very much that until you know this Kylie Minogue came along in, in the mid 1980s and almost caused a palace revolt down there. Half of the staff were going no one credible will ever sign with us ever again. From your book I get a feeling of like the lovable rogue of Australian rock and this sort of stuff. I would still have a lot of a lot of the musician in me still goes we were providing money, you know, enormous amounts of money for these people, of which we got very, very little. You know, I would still have that sort of sense of how, of, of Michael's position in, in the industry. Um, and in, in some ways you wouldn't be incorrect either. Or you Robinson know, Crusoe. Yeah, no, exactly. You, wouldn't be, you are not, James, the first person to go, hmm, yeah. like, hang on a second. But we present these sort of things, I don't know if this is a particularly Australian thing, but we quite like the lovable rogue businessman, even though there might be... There might be some who've come off second best in their dealings with them. They're extreme, Michael and the people around him, extremely powerful. They have fingers in just about every available pie. I mean, Michael Gadinsky is not just a record label. He's a publishing company, he's a merchandiser. You know, he's got a film company that made the Chopper Reed movie and many other things. Now, if you're in a band or an artist and haven't been successful and you've been involved with that structure, then you tend to have a slightly jaundiced view of that structure. I'm yet to find a musician who takes that inward look and goes, well, the fact that we weren't multi-platinum superstars is because our last four records were garbage. We didn't tour, we alienated everybody, and the time was wrong. Um, it's always very convenient to go... It's never occurred to me No, you know, oh, let's blame the record label. Oh, we're on Mushroom, let's blame Michael Gadinsky. Uh, it, it's not necessarily always the record label's fault. What is, what is Mushroom now? What is Gadinsky doing now? The, the music scene's so different to those heydays. Mushroom Records is owned by Warners these days after his very spectacular multi, multi, multi-million dollar sales to Rupert Murdoch and, and News Limited. But he's still got uh, Liberation and Liberator Records, so he's still releasing records by Australian artists, you know, be it Dan Sultan, be it the Rubin. So he, he's still there again reflecting, you know, what's going on at the moment. He's lost a little bit of what he was like at 18, but he's still a fairly unstoppable, manic, crazed person, you know, just cascading through life. Mm -hmm.